shining. But on the exterior, in the eye wall, is where the winds are strong. So you see the projected activity of the heavy rainfall where flooding is occurring. Uh, in fact, we've had several reports already, well over 115 uh, millimeters, much more to come. Kudu, home to you know 2.6 million, is going to miss out, but they're going to have the strong winds on the southern side. Taklaban, however, is in the worst case uh, area right now. I want to show you pictures of Bhopal because we've been, and I told you that I would, each weather segment to show you the devastation. This is just, of course, of the heavy rainfall. This is what we're expecting. Now, Surigao already 115 millimeters. They're looking at another additional 114 at least. And you can see where some sections pick up just a little bit more. Where you have higher terrain, you're going to have induced rainfall. It's going to become even heavier. Notice the color of pink here. This is where we have gusted 180 plus. What's staggering about this system is it never lost strength. In fact, it gained strength before it made landfall, and they typically lose some of their strength when they interact with land. That's expected. But this system and a computer model, when it drops it only briefly, we lose the color pink, but it picks back up again to super typhoon status. Almost unheard of as it makes its way then towards central Vietnam. Take a look at the winds. We talk about this sometimes when we have landfall. Remember Superstorm Sandy in the northeastern U.S.? It was a Category 3 at one point. This is well off the charts of a Category 5. In fact, if we even had a Category 6, most likely this storm would be in that range for the Atlantic season. A wind at 150 at the surface is much higher. The higher up you go, it's much stronger. So even though we may not have sky rises and, and, and high skyscrapers, we do have high terrain. So the same thing can be expected. Anyone who was evacuated from a coastline, most likely if they didn't get in a strong structure, went to, in some cases, higher ground, which is where you're going to have some of the stronger winds. I want to take you in and show you where we had landfall, first landfall, and then take you to Takloban. Notice the city here. The eye, the center of the eye, is just off the screen. So as it circulates counterclockwise, the strongest winds right now are over this heavily populated city. Notice the terrain. It's only about three kilometers away. It runs up to three, four hundred meters. That's just a huge heavy rainfall within a month long. Further back on the horizon, we've got the terrain that gets as high as a meters. So again, that can enhance the heavy rainfall. We're taking it at all the different angles of the coastline as the system progresses island after island after island. Where do you evacuate to? Let me show you the live pictures again. When you look at the, the visuals of the debris coming in and the winds, keep in mind this is one window. This is one window out of one building on one corner of one street in one community in one province. There are 30 provinces that are going to get a lot more than this. The debris that's been flowing from the left to right across your screen will change directions. A 180 degree change when the storm passes by, the strong winds blowing everything in one direction shifts and blows it in the other direction, weakening power poles, weakening structures, trees. This is when they become vulnerable and they, and they can collapse. Hopefully the power is shut off in many communities because we always hear about the execution. Take a look at this picture. Last December. This is when Bhopal, Super Typhoon, and the Mindanao caused a, a world of destruction. The storm system we're looking at now is much stronger than Bhopal, which damaged 216,000 homes, killed 1,900. This system then quickly moves where it keeps the strength toward Vietnam. We'll talk more about that in the future. But if we go back to the Mindanao, it was two years ago that we had Washington. Washington was a storm. It was just a tropical storm, but we had landslides that took the lives of 1,100. So we have 25 million, most likely, in this little area of concern here. And that's something we're going to be watching very closely because, in a way, Patricia, we're in unprecedented waters here with a size of a storm like this. All right. Thank you so much for that, Tom, and thanks for keeping an eye on that for us. We now have a guest joining us by phone. Marianne Zamora is a field specialist with World Vision. She's on the line in Cebu, which is one island west of Tacloban. Now, World Vision, Marianne Zamora, field specialist, uh, as I just said. So tell us, what are you seeing there? Um, or like dancing through to the strong wind. Um, like roads are 
just this morning when I woke up, we were experiencing con continuous um, slight rain, um, but but strong winds are are still felt. But so far we've been experiencing like almost like this one for sure. Be like in any minute from now we will be experiencing heavy downpour because like just a while ago we just experienced it. So from time to time this is slight rain and, and then in a few minutes the like, the heavy downpour will uh, is felt. So but this one in Cebu right now is quite um different from from Tacloban because in Tacloban right now um I've been like um receiving updates from from my field from field staff that um like our office in Tacloban is also um in Tacloban we need in later right now is already damaged so the glass window is already cracked is already cracked so the staff are trying to secure all the equipment and all the files there. So you're saying uh, that the damage to the windows, that's in Tacloban? What kind of damage are you seeing where you are? Um, right now, there's no damage. There's no damage. Yet. Hopefully, it will not um, It will not cause any damage. But we were anticipating for for um, for 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 Yolanda, Typhoon Haiyan, any, any, any hour from now. Because um, based on reports and news, we were um, Haiyan. Uh, or Yolanda will pass by Cebu around 10 a.m. today. Mm. Now, the Philippines gets about 20 typhoons on average every year. So do people know what to do? What kind of preparations did you take? Yeah, um, the, 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 the good thing now, because we've been experiencing typhoon and we just experienced earthquake um, last, last month, I'm actually one of the survivors who take an evacuation of the earthquake. Um, it's quite different now because people are people now are prepared. Um, in most areas in the Philippines, um, everyone is everyone is prepared, and even in our hometown back in Mindanao, um, people are like in evacuation centers right now. So um, I guess it's the same here. It's the same here in, in in Cebu. So I imagine you've been through quite a few typhoons, Marianne. How does this one compare? Uh, yeah, this is this is quite um this is um this is quite different because it's it's so strong and based on reports um this is the strongest typhoon um for for this year we've been anticipating typhoons from time to time knowing World Vision is a relief and humanitarian um organization but but this one is quite different because in most areas um from Mindanao to Visayas um it's like the Haiyan is like um, a tourist, so he actually, we, she actually like um, goes to every city, every provinces right now. So considering the radius is too big. Okay, well, please stay safe there, Marianne. Thanks so much for bringing us that update, Marianne Zamora from World Vision for us. And of course, we're going to have much more typhoon coverage throughout the hour. But right now, we're going to check some of the day's other top stories. Now, just days after the chief.